Buongiorno a tutti. Good morning to you all and welcome back to Sergio Marchione. Sono un po' Just 10 years ago Sergio Marchione started taking up the leadership of a theater on June 1st, 20, 2004. Ever since then, a major reform of the most important manufacturing company in Italy started up. Uh, it was in a very critical situation. It merged uh, with an important car manufacturer in the state. Hence, FCA was started. FCA is part of the G8 of manufacturing of car manufacturers worldwide. As a matter of fact, uh, the last hindrances have been done away with only yesterday before a possible recession. Better to understand how complex this operation has been, I'd like to say that it includes 16 brands that are extremely diverse, one from the other, from uh, the little van to the luxury um, automobile, with a strategic positioning on the global market uh, that certainly hasn't been uh, easy to get to. Just to quote a few figures, with FCA, there are, at the moment or in the future, 300,000 employees, 80,000 being in Italy, 159 manufacturing plants are 45 in Italy. And a very relevant uh, fact, over 700 research centers with 35 being in Italy. By the way, when we were here four years ago, uh, we were still talking about the Palmigliano agreement because the startup of this merger was extremely difficult at times heavily uh, criticized, at times uh, praised. But I believe that Sergio Marchioni had a strategy that was crystal clear as he meant to develop a synergy between Chrysler and Fiat, so to have a winning player on the global scene. The future of the manufacturing um, plants in Italy have been heavily uh, controversial, but I believe that in Italy, uh, he's going to provide us with an answer today about the future for these sites in Italy. Then, uh, I'd like to ask you about some kind of uh, um, global vision on the past decade. Uh, what were the good things and what could be done perhaps better, better or differently. And the second question that I would like to raise is about the future of FCA in Italy. There's another question that I wish to add that is perhaps of a wider scope. How Marchione see the future of manufacturing in Italy? What are the conditions for future development? Because Europe is such uh, is uh, facing a uh, um, desertification of manufacturing plants unless an important thrust is given to manufacturing. So much so that the EU has uh, set an objective in terms of fiscal compact and industrial compact so that by 2020, a percentage of some 20% of the GDP should be based on manufacturing uh, production. So thank you very much for being with us. And having said as much, I'd like to give you the floor straight away. Thank you, Bernard Schultz. And uh, good morning to everybody. It is a pleasure for me to be back here. Four years later, I'm pleased to be back here and to see this audience of many young people who are the real uh, core and soul of the meeting of Rimini. Thank you for inviting me here today. For the company I represent, uh, many things have changed since 2010. We approved the separation of the Fiat Group into uh, two distinct entities, Fiat and Chrysler on the one hand and CNH Industrial on the other. Uh, we listed CNH Industrial in Wall Street. 
we acquired 100% uh, of the capital of Chrysler after reorganizing the American car manufacturer and bringing it back to a leadership role. We completed the industrial, commercial and above all cultural uh, integration between uh, the two parts of our companies, the Italian one and the American one, Fiat and Chrysler. Now we are about to complete the legal and corporate uh, um, union merger of the two companies which will give origin to Fiat Chrysler automobiles. What unfortunately hasn't changed is the general situation, the extent of the crisis which hit Italy and Europe. And uh, to uh, be up to the task which I've been assigned today, that is sharing with you some thoughts about the present situation and the prospects for Fiat and our country, I'd like to begin uh, by telling you a story, a story from an American writer, David Foster Wallace. It is probably one of his shortest stories but certainly uh, one of the most brilliant ones. There are two young fishes swimming together. At a certain point, they meet uh, an older fish moving in the, wrong, in the opposite direction who greets them and tells them, uh, Hi, guys, how's water today? The two young fishes keep on swimming for a while, and then one of them tells the other, What the hell is water? Now, I decided to start with this story not because I feel like the uh, old, uh, wiser fish who can give you a lesson about the sense of water. The fact is that uh, in life uh, we are often very cocked in our habits, in our ideas, in our education, in our prejudices, and we become almost blind towards the uh, reality that surrounds us. We don't see the most obvious things, which um, very often are also the most important ones. And this has always, and this has been for a long time also the negative aspect of Fiat, one of the most dynamic and innovative companies with the more than 100 years of history and among the founders of car manufacturing, uh, was drifting away, was drifted away by currents. And the real tragedy is that no one could explain the reason why. When I arrived more than 10 years ago, I found myself in a fiat that was imprisoned by its own mentality, um, crushed by the problems which had created for itself and for which it was finding one excuse after the other. It was a company that was still that believed, uh, it was still living in a Ptolemaic system, um, which was protected and partially connected to policies, some politics, sometimes even supported by politics. So fiat was incapable of facing reality. The fact is that uh, in the meantime there had been a Copernican revolution. The entire world had changed. It, was, it had moved forward and the world uh, had become extremely flat, uh, open. Uh, Every company, in order to remain uh, competitive, had to become aware of the most obvious things. That uh, uh, it had to deal with competition, with the free market, and that was the only way to uh, find opportunities for success in the future. What we did then was to uh, interrupt a, a vicious circle which had been uh, fostered by inertia and the absence of dialogue. So we basically destroyed corporate hierarchies in order to allow fi fiat to make new decisions and to streamline operations. We introduced new cultural principles based on merit, on uh, research, on the search for excellence and on the change of, uh, of its vital spirit. As you know, this led fiat to um, achieve records and to reach all its economic and commercial targets. Until 2008, when uh, with the beginning of the international crisis, the world changed once again. Uh, the certainties uh, came down and in the meantime fiat had also transformed itself it had learned to uh, see uh, to live the culture of change as a need and uh, to feel uh, stimulated by uncertainty it knew that in a global world it is necessary to change strategy to adopt a new approach to find uh, for uh, innovative ways uh, to reinvent uh, uh, oneself it knew that uh, uh, not doing anything was the uh, road was to disaster. This was the reason why in the during the worst crisis of the last eight years, rather than wasting time, we decided to um, move forward. So we went to the United States at the core of the crisis to find for new to find new opportunities. It was clear that uh, in the 
car manufacturing sector, independence was no longer an asset. We had to uh, make economies of scale, to share investments, to increase production volumes and to reach new markets. And Chrysler was the perfect answer for us. Needless to say that despite uh, all the hype, uh, the media hype, uh, which uh, mm, characterized our alliance, only few people believed that this would work out well. Uh, uniting a company that was basically bankrupt to another that was suffering from the effect of the European crisis didn't, didn't seem like the best idea. But we decided to reorganize Chrysler and in less than two years Chrysler went back to making profits and to, it renewed its uh, product range and paid back all the uh, loans received by the US Treasury. The truth is in the last 10 years we created um, from an Italian car manufacturer that was almost bankrupt uh, and we were gave, we were able to give it back a global horizon. Fiat changed its structure, its economic dimension and now it has a much wider geographical extent. In order to better understand uh, the extent of this change we should look at the data concerning the group and in particular the car manufacturing and uh, compare it with the past and try to understand what the future will look like. In 2004 Fiat was only focusing on a single geographical area. Its turnover was 27 billion euro, 92 percent of which in Europe. It uh, produced small cars it sold approximately 1,900,000 cars per year. Uh, it made uh, losses. It was about to go bankrupt. The fiat we have created in uh, recent years, thanks to the integration with Chrysler, is uh, a much more diversified group, a much wider group. In 2003, our turnover reached 87 billion euro, so more than three times as much as 10 years ago. Our presence on the market is now more balanced because we are present in Europe and Brazil, which account for 20% of our turnover, and North America, which accounts for uh, more than half of our turnover. Last year, we sold more than 4.4 million cars, and we became the seventh car manufacturer in the world, slightly behind Ford. Fiat is now a company that can generate profits, very good profit, despite the losses uh, linked to uh, general brands in Europe. On the basis of our development project, uh, of our business plan which we presented in May, our goal is to transform Fiat Chrysler Automobiles into a company with uh, um, a turnover of 130 billion euro, an EBIT of 9 billion euro, which is uh, slightly more than two times as much as the one of last year, and a net profit of uh, 5 billion euro, that is five times as much as last year. We expect to have a balanced distribution of sales across four geographical areas with a significant presence in Asia. We set ourselves the uh, goal of reaching 7 million cars sold per year, which will allow us to uh, uh, climb up the rankings at least and to gain at least one position. Now, I'm not saying this uh, because I want to boast our results, but uh, uh, to tell you something else. Every result we've been able to achieve is indeed the res result of a new way of looking at things, of a new approach. Uh, we're now aware of who we are, where we are. This is a task that we at Fiat Chrysler do every day, perform every day. And this is uh, our strength, the strength that gave us um, the uh, ability to plan for the future. Behind our success there are people who are now freed of the cage of the past and of the cage of the past habits and who are able to look, things, uh, uh, look at things in an innovative way. This kind of approach has now become uh, a necessity not only for uh, um, the companies working in the industrial sector but for all kinds of organizations. Uh, the international crisis which Italy and Europe have faced in recent years and the economic situation they are experiencing are not the effect of the normal dynamics of economic cycles, but they should be seen in the light of a um, historical era made of uh, profound transformation. We must become aware of this change if we want to control it and if we want to adapt to it rather than uh, becoming its victims. I believe that uh, uh, this uh, era will mark a watershed uh, for at least two reasons. First, one, first uh, 
our certainties have been destroyed in um, the world of finance and in the world of the economy uh, all the systems have been the existing system has been basically destroyed we've lost all our points of reference uh, if we look at the situation in the 80s and 90s the economic growth and the market situation looked uh, well defined and uh, mm, basically following a certain order industrialized countries were in the growing stage of the cycle Europe was revitalized by the prospect of a single market and Italy despite the financial difficulties the disaster of uh, public accounts the high inflation and the unbalanced uh, trade um, trade mm, tra the negative trade balance sorry the situation was deteriorating but now the situation has completely changed uh, Suffice it to say that uh, the economic and the market situation in Europe uh, seems to be back into a phase of uncertainty and pessimism. And I'm also thinking about Italy, which is experiencing a long recession and it is now in a condition that can no longer ensure the competitiveness of the country. And uh, this is linked with the second historical change that we are now experiencing. Today's world, the world of the crisis, is pushing all systems, industrial, economic, financial and political system, towards uh, um, an approach of reform, towards the need of reforming and renewing things. So we need to uh, close with the past uh, and uh, we can no longer waste time denying problems or postponing solutions we can no longer waste our energy and resources and uh, maintaining our inefficiencies we can no longer waste our uh, skills uh, but we need to work together towards a common interest we can't waste time and opportunities we can't waste the material intellectual resources this is anti-economic and uh, uh, negative and it is above all immoral this is something that is valid at a general level for every sector and for every country the crisis has clearly shown our weaknesses everywhere this is why Europe uh, has to clearly think about its future we've always known that the lack of a European uh, government uh, governance of the economy would make uh, the monetary union uh, vulnerable we knew that uh, the prohibitions and the sanctions included in the Maastricht Treaty and in the Stability Pact uh, didn't contain enough uh, guarantees to prevent some countries from uh, um, deviating from the agreed upon uh, objectives. We knew that the powers assigned to the European Central Bank were too limited and that acting only as the sentinel of inflation would not be enough or uh, even detrimental. With the present crisis, Europe is now at a crossroad which uh, forces all member states to seriously think about the sense and the nature itself of the Union. They must decide if they uh, want to commit themselves once again uh, to work together towards building a, a future for Europe. The point is that we have to understand if uh, monetary union is possible without having a fiscal union and uh, even a political union. Europe is now faced with the task of understanding whether time is now for uh, strengthening the nature of its union. We must, the, the European Union must decide whether it should limit itself to simply supporting the individual member states uh, in emergency situations, or if uh, we, or if it wants to have a wider-ranging uh, approach uh, to protect not only its currency but also to spread unity and solidity to achieve its European dream. So the European Member States should uh, uh, overcome their national positions and uh, give up uh, their sovereignty, part of their sovereignty, to build a stronger union and to uh, have a common approach to manage the economy. This is the only way if we want Europe to get out of uh, the slump and to evolve towards a more mature nature. Italian uh, must now intervene in order to bridge the competitive gap which separates it from the other European countries. We've been saying, I've been saying for at least 10 years that we need uh, structural reforms uh, in order to um, bring our country back to com 
competitivity. And clearly, uh, I'm not the first one and not the last one to say that. However, the situation has barely changed. The system seems almost incapable to react. For some strange reason, in Italy, also faced with the recession and the suffering caused by the crisis with an unemployment rate which is now 12.6% uh, and 43% uh, unemployment rate, we still believe as if we were uh, a happy place where what exists must be preserved at any cost. Italy still uh, keeps on living just like the fishes of Wallace, uh, that is closed in uh, their bowl, incapable of uh, looking beyond the most obvious reality and uh, incapable to face the needs of modernity and of the global world. We spent 20 years uh, pretending to make reforms. We haven't uh, changed our social welfare system to the changes of the world and of society. We haven't changed the structure of our uh, management cost. We haven't been even able to um, make advantage, take advantage of the enormous benefits of the euro, benefits uh, which could have uh, reduced the interest uh, paid on public debt and which could have helped us uh, finance uh, our program of reforms. We, st we kept on living believing that uh, our country could still uh, consider its past as its point of reference. We addressed our resources to um, to nurture a destructive dialogue which has progressively weakened our institutions and system of rules. We have built ourselves a handicap which uh, uh, keeps foreign investors away from Italy, which erodes uh, the growth of salaries and which endangers uh, uh, prospects for uh, uh, creation of jobs and for um, lifestyle of future and generations so we have been our worst enemy when we say when i say we i mean really everyone those who govern the country the entrepreneurs who have been accomplices to this inertia and those forces which those conservative forces, both uh, right-wing and left-wing, which uh, are still rooted in uh, uh, many parts of society. For those who, like Fiat, uh, live off constant transformation, looking at a, at a system that is incapable of accepting, of uh, bringing about change, this is something uh, inconceivable. We still believe in the government, we are still confident in the government, and we've always done so, and we will keep on doing so. But the fact is that whoever ruled the country had to fight against the obstacles. Uh, we have seen only very few concrete results and a lot of compromises. There were some initiatives which, which started out well, uh, but then uh, they were changed in order to not to affect the interests of lobbies and to minimize the effects of any decision. In such a system, which is more and more about preserving itself and maintaining its power, maybe nothing will change. Prime Minister uh, Matteo Renzi has uh, a very difficult, uh, daunting task. Uh, he seems to be determined to uh, fight against the forces of resistance against change and reforms. In uh, my uh, meetings with um, Renzi, I encouraged him to uh, push with his uh, efforts for reform without uh, worrying about uh, the reactions and uh, um, about attacks. His mission is very important, much more important than all the uh, opposition. <clears throat> I was asked to give you a message of hope, of an optimistic message, and I'm uh, really aware that I'm not doing a, a good job. But this is the point. We need to become aware of uh, reality if we really want to create new points of reference and to um, adopt new behaviors, new approaches. We should stop waiting for a miracle. We cannot allow ourselves to wait uh, for uh, the system to be reformed. If this will hap if this happens, if the reforms we've been hearing about for decades are finally approved, then we will be very happy about it. 
but we can't uh, but we can't hope in a system that seems to r remain, uh, which doesn't seem to move, uh, to move forward. This is the message that I'd like to send you today. Those of you who have resigned yourselves, and I'm sure that in the last 40 years uh, uh, you have uh, done so, I would like to say the future only depends on ourselves. For those who wait for a solution to come from the top, for those who wait uh, for guidelines uh, of change to come from uh, um, to come from power from government, uh, well, I would like to tell you something. This won't happen tomorrow, tomorrow morning. You must become the actors of change, the drivers of change, if you want to change society. The idea of uh, Changing things will remain a utopia until uh, we uh, are not able to do. Until we decide not to do our part, we must wake up every day and do our part and do things differently from what we've done so far. Don't wait for someone else to tell you something, to give you directives, uh, and uh, so you have to be the first to break with the past. Rather than fighting against the existing reality with inefficiency and bureaucracy, you should think uh, about creating a new and more modern uh, world that would make the present reality obsolete. Don't let someone else to uh, define uh, your way. Bring your own way. Uh, and um, build your own approach and uh, uh, continue to follow it. And you have to begin from now. Accept the challenge of the unknown. Take risks. You may make mistakes, you may fall to the ground, but you will have acquired the strength and the courage to uh, get back up and to change again. You have the experience to start from scratch. And most of all, you will, be, you will have uh, uh, broken with inertia. The hopes for the future of Italy rely on uh, uh, people who uh, become active. To and our hopes rely on those who decide to react, to uh, commit themselves. And uh, the experience of fiat uh, is not different, it's not any different. When we decided to uh, unite with Chrysler, a company that was bankrupt, we um, we put our credibility, our reputation at risk. I also put my own career at risk. We uh, took the risk of uh, clearly showing the weaknesses of fiat without even uh, uh, sh relying on this mm, on the security to maintain our jobs if we had failed. In Italy, if we had uh, waited to um, to have a competitive system, we would have done nothing. Instead, we decided to play our role and to take our own risks and uh, to take up our challenges and uh, we made uh, courageous choices. We broke with the past. We realized it was important to leave the industrial association and to mm, have private negotiations with the trade unions. We went forward. Uh, without worrying about the accusations, the attacks, and for almost 10 years uh, we've been protecting our industrial network using the financial security which derives from our extra-European activities, especially in the United States and in Brazil. We have repeatedly stated that we don't want to close any plant in Italy, bearing all the cost of uh, um, a reality which is actually making losses. We are using all our strengths uh, which we have outside Italy to rebuild our competitive environment and to make it more modern and technological. As you know, we also decided to review our strategy in a radical way. In this way, we want to make our Italian plants uh, a starting base for uh, producing vehicles for uh, uh, markets all around the world. The results which we achieved with Maserati Ghibli and Quattroporte, both produced in the Grugliasco plant, which was completely renovated, clearly show that we are moving in the right direction. This plant was completely renovated and this not only allowed us to uh, save the jobs of more than 1,000 workers of the Bertone factory after six years of stop, 
but it also led us to create 2,000 jobs for uh, the workers of Mirafiori. And this is not the only example. Pomigliano, which has historically been labeled as one of the most complex, uh, complex uh, plants uh, at a social level and it was considered one of the least productive regions in Italy, we were able to create a model, uh, <coughs> an ideal plant, which was awarded the Medal of Honor of the World Class Manufacturing. In Melfi, we invested more than a billion euro to start the production of the new Jeep Renegade and the Fiat 500X, which will be sold uh, across the world markets. In Mirafiori, we are currently building production lines for the Maserati SUV Levante which will come out in 2015. In Casino, we are currently reorganizing the factory to produce a new car model. What we have done is only one of the examples which can of what can be done. But we must become aware altogether that Italy has yet to be completely rebuilt. I believe that if the corporate world unites its effort with the efforts of each and every citizen, we can change things. Every one of us can play its role. Uh, every one of us can uh, uh, act for the general interest. Uh, and uh, when uh, the long-term results are considered more important than the short-term results, and when uh, uh, the willingness to act uh, prevails on uh, easy choices. I think this is the way to respond to the demand for happiness, to the search for happiness, which unfortunately has been forgotten by too many people. In a book which came out a few years ago, Ma the journalist Massimo Gramellini stated, you can be the history of a coward or of a hero, of uh, someone who uh, fears, who is blocked by fear, or of someone who is capable of moving mountains thanks to his courage. Uh, you can uh, choose your own destiny, but stop looking for it outside of yourself. In uh, crucial moments of our history, Italians have always uh, shown uh, heroism. Uh, we have sometimes shown that we were very courageous. Uh, we weren't even aware that we could be so courageous. We've been able more than once to bring about radical changes and to give back uh, to uh, entire generations. All the cultural and social revolutions started from society. In all difficult moments, Italians have shown that what this have always shown uh, what this country can do, what uh, human and moral resources we have. The best chapters in the history of Italy have been written by men and women who were able to uh, change the status quo. These are also the resources which can lead us to a new stage of uh, reconstruction. Now I'd like to show you a video. This is a video which uh, we showed in February in the United States during the Super Bowl which is the most important uh, uh, U.S. sports event uh, to promote uh, the Maserati Ghibli. For the first time, a car designed and built in Italy was seen by more than 110 million spectators. The video talks about the hard job we carried out. It's a story of passion and it is also a tribute to the Maserati brand and to all the people who designed and built a, a powerful car that can compete with all the best cars. It is also a metaphor of what Fiat and Chrysler have done. Two companies which fought against internal problems and external difficulties which were able to overcome obstacles and which today can uh, be on the offensive and compete with the giants of the sector. After all, I think this is an invitation to being brave. It's an invitation for all those who fight against small and big difficulties in life and who can find the force to move forward. The world is full of giants. They have always been here, lumbering in the schoolyards, limping through the alleys, we had to learn how to deal with them, how to overcome them. We were small, but
but fast. Remember? We were like a wind appearing out of nowhere. We knew that being clever was more important than being the biggest kid in the neighborhood. As long as we keep our heads down, as long as we work hard, trust what we feel in our guts, our hearts, then we're ready. We wait until they get sleepy, wait until they get so big they can barely move. Then we walk out of the shadows, quietly walk out of the dark, I'd like to share with you some thoughts also about uh, young Italians. If it is true that my generation has the responsibility of uh, designing a new uh, approach to the world and to lay the foundations for a new future, it is also true that it will be up to young people to do so. And we haven't simplified things for young people, but Young people of today are far from the stereotypes in which we, uh, with which we often uh, define them. I've met hundreds of them, uh, both in Italy and abroad. They're the same young people who uh, were able to overcome prejudices in Pomigliano and who created the best European plant. They are the children of our employees, uh, whom I meet every year. They are the uh, young men and women of the engineering, design and development, uh, product development departments who left from Turin to go to Detroit and uh, to uh, carry out the project for the integration uh, with Chrysler. Now the young talents uh, I see in the Italian University every time I'm invited to talk about the experience in Fiat. There are also the hundreds, uh, thousands of young people who come here at the meeting of Rimini who have uh, strong values and who come here to participate. When I speak with the Italian young people, I l see the force, the passion they have, the love they have for their country. They uh, only ask to be given the opportunity to, to contribute towards building the future. Their courage, their um, quench for idealism and freedom are our best guarantee. These young people, as Tolstoy wrote, know that the ideal is the only thing we know the only thing that can guide us as individual and as mankind human uh, mankind. Wishing them good luck uh, would be too little. I hope uh, that uh, they can find the moral strength uh, to move forward, that they can find the courage to move forward. And as the title of the meeting says, that they can go towards the peripheries of the world and to find a more profound sense to existence. These are the uh, most powerful uh, strengths that uh, human beings can have. As I am approaching the end of my speech, I wonder if uh, I've been able to clearly describe what I mean by commitment towards change. Uh, someone wearing a, a black uh, uh, sweater who comes here to talk about mergers, separations, turnaround, who uh, travels on a plane uh, around the world uh, to invest billions of euro, and I'm aware that this may sound uh, unreal, uh, that you cannot identify with my life. The truth is that my existence as a leader is much closer to your reality, to your daily life, much more than you think. This is why I'd like to tell you two stories, which are really uh, a symbol of what I do every day in my life. The first example I'd like to give is a letter written by a young woman from Detroit who applied for a scholarship. This is a 
program that was created in 1996, uh, which uh, funds scholarships for the children of our employees around the world. And uh, this is a program which supported thousands of young people in uh, uh, higher education and in university. This is her letter, and I'm quoting. I'm a young woman from Detroit, uh, born and grown up uh, in Detroit. Um, now, <clears throat> the production line gives me food to uh, give me the food to grow up. In March 1996, when I could hardly walk, my mother began to work in the Chrysler plant in Jefferson North, and uh, as a good student, uh, dreaming to attend uh, law school, she um, was pregnant and uh, she had no home and she was only 18 years, ago, oh, 18 years old. She went to work for Chrysler to have an income, to give an income for our family. She prepared my breakfast every day, every morning, and Chrysler was basically providing for all of us. She didn't go back to university, but she worked hard to um, provide for her children. And I've been always grateful to her. I attended the public schools the, um, of Detroit, which have a very negative reputation. I had very good grades, and these allowed me to uh, enroll towards uh, to enroll in uh, courses. I learned very soon that in Detroit uh, must be very determined and. Uh, uh, determined to build their own future. When I moved to the other side of the city, I was excited to forget about the days in which I was scared of going to school because uh, uh, I was afraid of bullying. But even to, uh, when I attended a private school in the suburbs, there was something negative. Uh, classism, racism in the hallways. My first day in school I was asked if I had ever been shot and if I came from the ghetto. Um, the summer before my last year my cousin who was 14 years ago was arrested for car theft. He was like a brother. I was helping him with his homework. He taught me to um, ride a bicycle. I never uh, missed one of his football games and he was always uh, ready to um, was always attending my spelling bees. In my attempt to pursue better education, I had neglected the person I cared for m the most. When I went to find him in prison, he told me that he had been successful, that he had failed and that there was no hope for him. I cried and I decided to do something. Um, after an ex after a traineeship uh, at the office of the district attorney in Michigan, I participated in a project for the prevention of youth crime in Detroit, and I was given the opportunity to uh, make to have a traineeship uh, with the police. Now I attend the Northwestern University, but I'm often worried about the cost of courses, and I chose the subjects, the courses, on the basis of the prices of the books. I would like to st to attend the school law, and this scholarship would help me achieve my dream. I'm from Detroit, a consensus work, uh, worker um, taught me the importance of having education and of setting yourselves objectives. I learned to count on my own strengths and to be strongly determined. The decline of my city stimulated me to uh, fight for equity and justice uh, between communities, whatever the race and social conditions. One day I'll become the mayor of Detroit. Detroit is what I am. So we received this letter from Detroit and it describes uh, a life of hardship, of uh, uh, privation. Uh, which is unfortunately uh, the same story for uh, a lot of people. I could, uh, for instance, uh, read you similar experiences, for instance, in Brazil. In Brazil, we've been working for 10 years with the Arvore da Vida project in order to fight against the poverty and to promote the social and economic development of the Jardim Teresopolis community, which is one of the poorest uh, uh, neighborhoods um, close to our Betim plant. At present, more than 
so far tw more than 20,000 20, children and adolescents benefited from this project. These are all examples of the impact which our group can have on the life of people who surround us, of how we can influence in a positive way the communities where we live. The second episode I'd like to share with you today dates back to uh, five months, to three months ago during the ceremony for the inauguration of our new plant in Tipton, Indiana. Uh, the person speaking is Rich Borov, whom I met that very same day. He's the chairperson of the UAW local, the American Trade Union, which has which had long been seen as the enemy number one of uh, American car manufacturers. But as you can see, the situation is a lot different. I'd like to introduce the president of UAW Local 685, Rich Borf. Thanks, Dave. The UAW is pleased that the Chrysler Group recognizes the value of a highly skilled workforce. The commitment and dedication to building high quality parts has led to the creation of more good paying manufacturing jobs and an extraordinary growth in the industry that no one else has seen. The UAW looks forward to working with Chrysler Group partners to continue this momentum. I also would like to thank you, Brian. Uh, it's been a long journey. Started working with you when we launched ITP2. I've had to make a lot of tough decisions, but I got to I got hand it to you for sending over that documentation across Sergio's desk a few times as he stated earlier. I appreciate that. And, and I would also like to thank you, Sergio. I say, uh, Scary days we faced. We shut the doors to our locations. My, my, my reference to that is Jerry Price. Jerry Price hired in in uh, April of 72. So when we went through the 79 through 84 loan guarantees, I said, Jerry, did they shut the doors? Did they walk everybody out? He said, no, Rich, they didn't. So he had me worried when he walked everybody out. And I, and, I, and I can tell you, Sergio, the day I was sitting in my office and I heard that you had walked through KTP, it's a day that most of us won't forget because you are our lifeline. Me as a man. Come to work like my brother and sisters do every day to do the best job they can do to put out the best quality part and to provide a standard of living for their family. So I thank you for allowing us to keep our dignity and raise our children like we wish. Thank you. I think that these two examples clearly show what Fiat Chrysler Automobiles is uh, in a much better way than I could ever do. They speak of a re reality that of a situation which we manage every day. They speak of the importance of uh, human relations, of the millions of human relations which uh, are created every day in an organization which groups 300,000 people. And they also show something else, that is that beside uh, uh, elaborating strategies, uh, business plans, the so-called technical part in the management of uh, our company. The real priority is uh, human priority. We have to worry about uh, human beings working in our company, uh, considering at the central element. Of, and this is what has allowed us to bring about the most radical changes. This has allowed us, for instance, to uh, put an end to the historical rivalry in uh, relationships with trade unions and to open a new chapter based on mutual trust. Th 
300,000 people are way too many in order to be able to control all of them. The only thing I can control is to ensure them that uh, we are going to share common values, whatever the differences in culture and nationality. The real strength of FCA is this. Uh, as regards myself, my ambition in life has always been very simple. When I go to bed every night, uh, wherever I am, whatever the time, I always ask myself one, sim goal, one simple question. If I've been able to improve things in comparison to the morning, and if I've done all my best to protect uh, the well-being of our people. That's it. But it is exactly the simplicity of these objectives which makes this leadership a noble calling. And this is what I'd like to wish for you, to be able to reply yes to this question um, as often as possible in our future efforts. Thank you very much for inviting me here. Thank you. Thank you, Sergio Marchioni, for this appeal to shoulder our own responsibilities, to be bold and brave. Thank you for setting the example that change is possible. Very difficult situations can be changed. So let me raise just one question, if I may. In the midst of so many difficulties, when faced so many attacks, are faced with so many people that wouldn't trust you, what was your certainty when you take up such huge challenges leading to such remark remark results? Well, that is a question that I always ask them myself, day after day, at the end of the day. I always wonder whether the situation has improved after my work. Uh, and uh, this is something that you cannot measure, you know, uh, outside. Well, yesterday, for example, we announced that, that the shareholders uh, haven't stopped the merger between uh, Chrysler and Fiat. So an important step forward has been made in the development of the group. But these are the things that sometimes we focus upon rather than the management on a daily basis of 300,000 people. Yesterday, actually 10 days ago, I was in Brazil and I meant to interview one of my managers, uh, but apparently he wasn't there. And I tried to meet him when uh, he was in Italy and uh, he was on holiday in Italy. So I tracked him back. I met this uh, guy just yesterday and he was on his honeymoon at, in Barbados and uh, he got back to Italy to meet me. I felt really embarrassed that this guy, you know, left his wife in Barbados to uh, meet me. And this actually is very telling about the commitment of our leaders, of our managers. These people normally, uh, you know, would usually say, wait for me to end my holiday. But, you know, the possibility of having part of a small group managing this important company is something that we all feel very much committed to. So everybody is doing their best, is making huge sacrifices so that our plan is accomplished. 
the plan that we presented on May the 6th. I was asked whether I would go to Fiat knowing about uh, the difficult situation at Fiat in 2004. And rationally speaking, I shouldn't have taken up that challenge because the situation was nearly impossible. But we did improve the situation, uh, relying on a number of young people, some of whom were less than 30 years. And uh, we raised these uh, young men, uh, giving them room to act, room for maneuver. It is just that as when you teach your child to go with a bicycle, you know, you have mm, to support him, but only marginally. Uh, so to let the team grow, you have to be behind so that important results can be obtained. And this is just the recognition of the skills of these people. These people, these young people have been so brave as to take up important challenges. I firmly believe that morally, the challenge is a good one. I'm sure uh, that if that is the case, people feel involved. Uh, and, you know, having 300,000 people involved is not easy. Uh, sending emails, texting people to uh, managers is quite demanding. We have to generate that daily environment within our plants, in all the plants, in all the recent centers, in all the marketing uh, offices of this commitment, to this desire to grow, this will to be competitive in a healthy way. And sincerely, I should tell you that the fact that the experiment has been repeated in Chrysler ever since 2009, and the situation is even worse in Chrysler, you know, being of uh, German origin, you know that there was uh, a prevalence of uh, Daimler for some decade within Chrysler that didn't bring about very good results, I'm afraid. So we uh, showed up our, you know, the unlucky Italian chaps. And yet we did it. And uh, we were lucky enough to meet people at Chrysler that uh, uh, had uh, uh, very much the same attitude as the people that we met at Fiat in 2004. So uh, we found out uh, alternatives for us, and this very much depends on us. You have to be uh, uh, convinced uh, that there is hope for that you can take up this commitment. And you know, fear is what I don't want to see with my managers. When I went to Chrysler in 2009, though, what I read on everybody's face, it was sheer terror. And when you see uh, thousands of people that uh, do not know whether they're going to be living or not, or whether they're going to have a job in the next few months, well, you understand how important your commitment is. Decisions are not easily made in that case. I did make decisions and serious decisions, and my colleagues are very much as committed as I am, with the same mission in mind. I hope that uh, example of fiat is followed or is looked at not as show off, you know, not. Uh, but there are situations that might seem desperate. Uh, there might see, be situations where competition is fierce when they already consider you dead, and yet you can st uh, start from scratch. You can win it. Italy, at this point in time, cannot wait any longer. So there is a, a statement that I wish to make. Yesterday, negative statements were made uh, by the president of Confindustria, uh, the Italian manufacturer associations. Well, I always try and be optimistic. We tried to have structural changes. We have been trying for quite a long time, and uh, the decision had already been taken in 2010 when the uh, crisis uh, had already uh, broken out. But uh, you know, we cannot wait any longer. Otherwise, the situation is going to get worse with the um, unemployment uh, rate worsening, with young unemployment getting even worse. So I believe that it is very much in the hands of entrepreneurs of their approach. It is them that should take up the challenges ahead of us. Uh, obviously, the uh, solution is not to come from above. Thank you. I think we should follow suit to this invitation. We should do our best. And the long applause 
I think, uh, is uh, uh, an invitation for you to come back to the meeting uh, over the next few years. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sergio Marchioni.